Okay. In this segment, we're going to talk about a really great new feature that's called the Power Query. The Power Query is going to allow you to import data from other sources. Uh, so I'm going to show you the three most popular data sources. I'm going to show you how to pull data in from a text file, an access database, and also a, a SQL Server file. All right, so now in this case, it probably would start on a blank sheet. I'm going to pick on that plus sign to add a blank sheet. Okay, so we're going to click on the data menu up there. And then where it says get data, that is a, a pretty recent addition. Maybe you started in Excel 2013 or something like that. So here's the new way to import data. It actually gets in the Power Query world at this time. So I'll pick on the data menu and I'll pick on get data. There's going to be a lot more data sources than ever before. So if I say from file, that's where I can get a text file, which I'll show you very soon. XML, JSON, SharePoint. If I say from database, I have SQL Server, Access, IBM DB2, Oracle. All right, so a lot of those weren't there before. Microsoft Azure is now there. Online services include SharePoint, Microsoft Exchange, Dynamics, Facebook, Salesforce. Those were never there before. And then we have from other sources. So let's try a classic text file or a, a comma delimited file will be called CSV. You will get to those in the same location here. So I'll say from text. Now you're going to point to your text file on your computer. So I have one over here. I'm going to go back to the desktop folder and I'll go to my class files folder. And I have this file that's called leads. Notice how it says leads is a text document. It's a plain unformatted data file, really popular format. And, you, and CSV would work the same way as this one. So I'll pick an import. It's going to show you what that file looks like on this next window as you can see. Now for a text file, then you're going to use this delimiter. Uh, so this one is tab delimited. That means each field is separated by a tab. So if you ever see a CSV, then you would pick on comma because the C means comma there. If you're not sure which one it is, you could try the different ones. So let's try colon. Clearly that's not the right one, right? The data doesn't look like. So let's try comma. That's not the right one. So if you're not sure which it is, then you can just go through these until you find the right one. And you'll know. As soon as I pick on tab, we could just tell that that's the right one, right? If you ever see a CSV file, then you would pick on comma from that window. So then I'll pick on the word load down here. And just like that, it pulls the data in, as you can see. All right, so it actually pulls it in as one of those formatted tables as well. So with, uh, now the formatted table can then be pulled into what we call the power pivot, or we can make a pivot table from there. So that was pulling in data from a text file. This time, let's pull data in from an access database. So it actually made a separate sheet called sheet 34. So I'm going to go back to sheet two now. And in this case, uh, actually, let's go to another blank sheet. So I'll pick in the plus sign and add another blank sheet. OK. So then I'll pick on, let's try an access database this time. I'll pick on the data menu, get data from file or from database, and I'll say from access database. Okay, here I have this tables access database, right? You should have, you probably have uh, some access databases around as well. It's a really popular fi file format. So I'm going to pick on the tables database. It is an access database. An access database is going to have many tables and many queries. So you pick which the one that you want. So let's go with, what if we went with the, um, how about the, the shippers? I'm going to use this in, in a future example. So I'm going to pick on shippers there and I'll pick on load. Good. So now that came in as a formatted table. In fact, uh, I see the table name is called shippers. That's going to be important, uh, so we're going to use that in a future example. Watch again how we're going to import uh, from an access database. So I'll pick on the data menu, get data from database, from access database. I'm going to use that same one, and this time I'm going to get the employees table, and I'll pick on load. 
Good. Now, um, let's stay with that asterisk example. Notice how these are pulling in the entire table. One of the benefits of the Power Query is you can actually filter and sort the data before you pull it into Excel. So let's try something like that. So I'm going to pick on the data menu again, and I'll pick on Get Data, and then From Database, and I'll say From Access Database again. This time we'll use the Tables Database. Now watch, I'm going to pick on Orders here. Now, if I pick on the word load, it'll pull in all of the records. But if you pick on transform data, then you can sort and filter the data before you pull it into Excel. And there's other things you can do as well. Let's try something like that, transform data. This is really going into the actual Power Query. Notice how this window says Power Query. So right away, it gives you a preview of that data. And right away, we see the sort and filter is in there. So if you did the sort and filter on this window, then only the, then that's how it's going to come into Excel. It'll have the records sorted the way you want it to and also filtered. So you can sort and filter the data before you bring it into Excel using the Power Query. So that's a nice feature of that. For example, if I only want to see certain customers, let's say I just want to see those two customers, then it's just going to give me the records with those two customer IDs. All right, so if I picked on close and load right now, we would only bring those records into Excel. L let me uh, pull the filter back again. I'll say clear the filter. So we can sort and filter the data in the Power Query. We can also summarize the data in the Power Query as well. So I'd like to have a subtotal for each customer. So I'll pick on group by, okay. So see group by up there on the home menu. I'm going to group it by the customer ID. So I'm going to have a um, customer total. That's the name of the field. Uh, and then I can do different math with that. We'll do a sum. And the column that I want to sum is the order amount. So we're grouping it by the customer ID, which will give us a subtotal for each customer ID. The field is going to be called customer total. I want to do a sum, and the field I want to sum is order amount. Now notice how it summarized the data. So when we're, when we're in the Power Query, we can sort and filter any of the fields. We can also do that group by, and that's how we can get subtotals. And there's other things we could do with the Power Query, but that kind of gives you the highlights. So in this case, I'm going to pick on Close and Load. And now notice how I've just brought the subtotals into Excel. Very good. And in fact, I'm going to call the table um, Totals by Customer. That's what I'm calling the table. And we're going to use that in a few minutes when we get into the Power Pivot. All right. So you can see we, we can pull in from a text file. We can pull data in from an Access database. Let's do one more import. We're going to import from, uh, well, let's do another Access database uh, uh, that, now that I think about it. So I'll pick on Data, Get Data from the database. I'll choose Access again, same Access database. And this time I'll get the order details. All right, and that'll be fine. I'll pick on Load. That brought the entire order details table into Excel. So it, they made it easier to pull data in from other sources into Excel. Let's do one more example of that. I'll pick on the data menu. I'll say get data. And I'm going to say from database. Now, or let's say from other sources. Kind of the catch all category is ODBC. ODBC is an acronym. It means open database connectivity. So most of your larger databases are ODBC compliant which means they can share data with, uh, with other databases. So the most, most famous ones are Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase. Um, there's tons of them, SAP, SAS. So talk to your IT team. They can give you the ODBC driver uh, for your database, and they'll know what that is. So I'm going to pick on the from ODBC. Now, when you do this on your computer, you'll have a different list than I have. 
because they can give them different names, there's different sources, but they all work the same way. So I'm gonna pick on the SQL Server from this computer and I'll pick on OK. Now, sometimes it'll ask you for your username and password, so you'll get that from your IT team. So now it's just connected to my SQL Server on this computer. So these are the databases on that server. Uh, so again, your IT team will tell you which databases and tables are necessary for your needs. So I'll pick on the products table and I'll pick on load. So now it pulled that in to the it pulled that into the Excel spreadsheet as well. So that is all part of the Power Query. We were able to pull in text files, access databases, the larger databases using the ODBC. Now, this window uh, isn't really necessary. Let me show you why. I can click on the data and notice how when I pick on one of those sheets, it'll have the query window, which has the same choices as over here anyway. So I can actually, let's say that data changes on the, the, on the other side, maybe on the access side or the SQL Server side. I can, I can pick on that sheet, pick on the query window, and then pick on refresh. Okay, and then it'll, I'll get the newest data. So I don't really need this extra window anymore. That happened when we did the Power Query. Uh, so when you pick on the data, you can pick on the Query menu and then pick on Refresh there. Or I can pick on the Data menu and pick on Refresh there. All right, so uh, I wanted to show you the